I'm going to go to Abdul Alizada. Um, he's got a question on this, and then we'll continue the discussion. Um, I am a refugee activist from Hazara community. I spent time in a refugee camp in 1999. And now I'm, I run my own business successfully and I'm strongly committed in building my new country, Australia. My question is, why punish refugees who are desperately seeking safety rather than people smugglers? <clears throat> Isn't that the same as punishing the homeowner who are burgled rather than actual thieves? Yeah, I've got a quick answer from Peter Garrett. I want to hear from the rest of the panel. Well, um, it's certainly not the intention to punish anybody. The intention is to try and reduce the number of risky passages that people are taking and to ensure that the opportunity that is presented by Australia's existing program is afforded to those in an appropriate and a regulated setting. And that's why, for example, the humanitarian numbers were expanded by this government by some 20,000. That's why we'll start to see people, for example, coming from places like Indonesia to Australia uh, in order that they can take up their appropriate rights as asylum seekers when those rights are granted. It does appear, however, that the people coming in on boats are being punished because they don't get the chance to apply for status in Australia without staying for years in another place. Well, well, Tony, on the one hand, we've got the opposition that just thinks you can simply put up your hands and Mr Abbott just wants to stop the boats. He wouldn't raise it with the Indonesian president, which is no, the keystone that's, that's that's the the key that. of the coalition's policy. What we're saying, though, <clears throat> is that it's absolutely important to deal with this particular issue in a way which reflects the recommendations of an expert panel. People shouldn't forget that this has been a hard issue for the parliament and that when the Angus Houston panel, which included people that were respected across politics and had strong and well-held views about this issue, got together to try and work through what potential solutions they might okay. be able to deliver, they gave okay. us those all recommendations. Right, right. I want to hear from our non we want to get them out there. Can. We'll come back to you. <laughs> Billy Bragg. Well, I think the whole idea of, uh, of putting refugees on, uh, on Nauru as a deterrent, I don't really think you're taking on board what makes people take the chance of getting on one of those boats and taking their lives in their hands to come all this way. You know, there's absolutely no way you're going to stop people trying to get here to Australia while your economy is, is in the state that it is. I'm in a well, very fortunate position. Is. I'm a very... You know, I think the world is changing. People move around much more than they used to. We have a similar problem in the UK now with people <coughs> coming from as far away as Afghanistan to the UK as well. These people are always going to come when there's the possibility of a better life for them or for their children. That is what motivates them. They're no different from our parents who moved to big towns, to big cities to get jobs, our grandparents who migrated to different countries. I think the idea that, that they can be uh, deterred doesn't really work. And frankly, you know, a country must be judged by how it responds to those most in need. What happened to, you know, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit? These are the people who are coming and asking for our help in my country and in your country. And I think to, to make it a, a matter of trying to stop the, the smugglers, these people are going to keep coming because you're in a beautiful country. You've got the second, the 12th biggest economy in the world. You have the second average, uh, average second highest wealth in the world behind Switzerland. If, you know, people are going to want to come here. You should be, one, proud of the fact you live in the lucky country, and secondly, you should be a bit more hospitable to people who need help. A man of answer. Well, look, um, thanks for the advice. Uh, I, I just mentioned to you that uh, United States, Canada and Australia have, for donkey's years shared the position one, two and three of the countries that decide deliberately to open their doors and give permanent long-term resettlement to refugees. Australia is either third or second. Let's not go to where the UK is. We do open our doors and we are one of the most generous countries uh, to people in need. This is not about that issue. This is about who gets to benefit from that generosity. How do we choose? There's a world full of people that would like to come here and many, many who are entitled to be classified as refugees. So we have to have, as Peter says, some ordering in here. The Houston Committee, I think, came up with a, a reasonable notion of 
no advantage over others. Now, I've been, and mm -hmm. others may well have, to some of the camps in Thailand where the Karen are, where you have third generation people living in camps. And I'm prepared to say that I'm behind tough border policies that do not give advantage <coughs> to people who can afford a people smuggler over some poor so-and-so who's been waiting for generations in a camp and hasn't got the money for a people smuggler. I'm happy to stand up for that. Okay, um